So we've been adding some basic elements to the page. We've added a picture. You should explore what else it says there about add media. But um, notice um, we have insert URL and such. So you're, you're able to add more than just pictures. You're able to add multimedia, which are video and audio and such. And it's actually a lot easier than you think. So let's take a, a little segue to see how would I add, for example, um, a video to my site. Uh, so I'm going to open another window. So you can open another web browser window or another tab or whatever you want, but I'm going to open another window. And I'm going to go over to youtube.com. You can, of course, upload your video directly to your site. But I'm going to recommend, if you're going to use video, upload it to some holding site like YouTube or Vimeo. You know, these other sites that are focused on, on sharing video. So, let's see here, advice on video. Use a third party hosting site like YouTube, Vimeo, what else? What other video sharing sites? Those are the big ones. Um, I guess you can use Instagram and Flickr. That's another one, flickr.com. So I would recommend, and we do this for our clients, we don't upload the video right up to the server itself. We don't upload the video to the, to the Bluehost server. We upload it over to YouTube because YouTube has infinite space. Your website doesn't, probably. YouTube has the best computers and hardware. Your server for your website probably doesn't. Uh, it has the fastest connections on the internet. Your website probably doesn't. And so you can use all those re all those free resources. Use third-party hosting sites because they have better resources than you. You can be paying um, forty to sixty to eighty to ninety to a hundred dollars a month. For your own, for your own website, and you do get better service when you pay more. Just like a more expensive car is probably a better car. So if you pay more for your hosting provider, we'll have a discussion on that later. You get better resources, but don't even waste those resources if you are paying hundred dollars a month. I mean, hundred dollars a year, even hundred dollars a month. Uh, don't waste your own resources. Use the resources of these other providers. I'll show you how that works in just a moment. Use a third-party hosting site, then link, then uh, embed your video onto your site. So for example, we're on YouTube. You can find any video you like. I'm going to search for a video up here, uh, how to bake a pecan pie, as an example. So there's all of these results. I'm just going to choose the first one that I see here. My easy pecan pie recipe, 92,000 views. So any of these videos, any video that you like, this will work on 99% of all the YouTube videos. Click on a video. I'm going to pause it. Click on a video, and then below the description, below who uploaded it, you will see a button that says share. A little arrow and share. Click on that share, and you'll have here share this video directly to Facebook or Twitter, etc. Or embed it. Click embed. And it says, okay, here's the code to place this video on your website. You're not uploading it to your own site, you're not slowing down your own site, you're not using the resources of your own site. YouTube is storing it and sharing it and everything. It's just saying, get this code, right-click copy, And on my site, I 
have to paste it as text. We have visual view, text view, code view. You just copy code. Therefore, we need to paste it into the code view. If you switch to text at the very bottom, paste it, switch back to visual. There's my, there's my video. So this is what I recommend. This is what we do for clients as well. Create a free YouTube account. Upload as many videos as you want, as long as you want. I've uploaded, personally on my own account, I've uploaded a three hour long YouTube video. It took a while to upload it, but it's there and I can easily share it. For our clients, we do commercials and such. We upload them to YouTube. Just let me finish my thought. One moment, yes. So you want to use YouTube because of the benefits of it being such a large network. The benefits of it being searchable and anyone can find the video. So uh, to show this again, I need to go back to the video over on the embed box right there. You need to copy that line of code, right click, copy. On my, on my um, post here, I'm going to switch over to the text view. Um, still have to insert media and where we inserted the penguin picture, and I don't have those options populated. Uh, we're, we're not in insert media. We didn't do it that way. Yeah, cancel. Thank you. And so then when I switch over to the text, all right, everyone, if you're going to help each other out, I do ask you to do it at a reasonable volume. So if you need help, remember, call me over. But then at this point, I switch over to the text view, and then I'm going to paste what I copied. YouTube is giving me this embed code. It's code. So I need to paste it into my text view. They should call it code. And then when I go back to visual, then the video will be there, embedded. So as I said, this works for 99% of videos, because the default is when anyone uploads a video, so I'm going to just put another video randomly, Martha Stewart's Pecan Pie Recipe. Like Martha on Facebook and enter our sweepstakes for a chance Guys to win in the Martha's back, entertaining book. Watch crazy. the Martha Stewart Show daily. So, any video has the share button right there, unless they turn it off. So if it's not there, they turned it off. So every video is going to have that embed code. Switch to share and then embed, and then you'll be able to put it on your site. Question? So, okay, so let's say you have a free web type of blog. Can you share any video? Or that yes. Not? I just, uh, right there, I'm going to share Martha Stewart's video on my site. I know earlier I said that about pictures and that's one thing here but this one again if they don't want their pic their video to be shared they're gonna turn that off so if they've got that share button it's gonna be okay for you to share it they want you to also I want that I want to upload my own video and I want other people to share my video for me to get free publicity that's what I was saying earlier. Okay, why would you do this? I can upload my video directly to my site, but why would I go through the trouble of creating a YouTube, uploading it there, copying my code, pasting it to my blog? Because YouTube is one of the biggest networks in the world. It's probably the second most popular website in the world. 
And so if I have my videos of my company right there on YouTube for anyone to find and share and view and click on, that's another way to get that traffic, another way to build that SEO. So there's no exactly, you know, ad video exactly, but the point is, even if you don't have any experience with code, this is still a super valuable thing to do, this text view, because then many websites nowadays give you embed code, the code to embed that item onto your site. Same thing over here on Vimeo. If you haven't heard of Vimeo, it's V-I-M-E-O dot com. It's another video sharing site. It's an alternative to YouTube. It has different features and such. You don't have to use it, but this is another video sharing site that might be useful to you. You can look at it on your own to see if it's valuable to you or not, or stick with YouTube. But over on Vimeo, it's the same sort of thing. I, I'm going to see lots of videos. That's what I'm about to show, yes. So any video on Vimeo also has this share. They have it as a little paper airplane. But that icon right there is the share button. And with that share icon, it pops it up right here. Here's the embed code. You copy that code from Vimeo and paste it onto my site. So if you've, ever, if you've ever seen this on any website, the share button, this embed code and such, that's what it's for. <coughs> to share a video out to social media or to embed it, to, you know, paste it into your site. <coughs> yes? So if this were live, we could go into the blog post, write a blurb that we want to around about the video, embed it, publish it, and then when it comes up, it won't be a link, it'll be the YouTube video box, right? Exactly. Right in the post, people will see it and click play, and it'll play right there. It's embedded right into the post. Yes? Can I resize it or align it somewhere? What if I want to center it? That, um... It's not as an easy answer, unfortunately, because it's about the code. So if you know how to read this code, there is a spot right there to change the width and the height. So the short answer is I wouldn't that's one big limitation. I wouldn't try to edit that very much. Um, when we do this embed here on YouTube, there is show more, and then there are a few options we can set here. But if it doesn't give you the option, I wouldn't try to do it. That's a little more complicated. So over at Vimeo, it's also got share. So uh, the, the purpose again for this is um, upload your uh, upload it to these sites in here. They have better resources. They're not going to run out of space. Uh, their site's not going to slow down. You just copy the code onto your site, and then it works right from your site, embedding it. I'm going to mention here a couple of other of these embedding sites. Uh, for example, if you're interested in adding, uh, so for audio, let's say you're interested in adding, let's say you're a musician and you want to put your music on, on the site for people to hear. Uh, again, are you going to upload your multi-megabyte file, 10 of them to your own site and slow down your own site, use your own resources, or are you going to use something like this? So for audio we have one of the famous ones is soundcloud.com. We've also got bandcamp.com. We've got one I just heard of, which I just used and I, and I like it. It's called audiomac.com. So these are like the, the YouTube of audio. If you have some audio recording, have you heard of podcasts? If you haven't heard of a podcast, it's like, a, it's like an internet radio show. But whereas a regular show on the radio, you have to tune in at a specific day and time to hear it, a podcast is, it automatically downloads to your device, 
uh, you know, iPhone, iPad, Android phone, Windows phone, whatever, it downloads automatically when there's a new episode and it's ready for you to listen whenever you want to hear it. So podcasts are getting more and more popular nowadays. There's so many of them out there. And the way that works is you upload your, your episode to one of these services, and all of these will give you an embed code to add to your site. Question. Yes. Okay, so um, you're talking about two sites, the video and sound. I thought it was one of the forums, but not necessarily having them all shared uh, with everyone. Or can someone go through? Photo sharing, a good one is Flickr. If you go to Flickr, F L I C K R dot com, Flickr, you can upload your photos there, make them private, and only certain people can see them. You wouldn't want to embed those onto your site, though, because they wouldn't be private anymore. Anyone that finds your site could see those pictures. But that's only the photos that you, that you embed to the Yes. Okay. Yes, you can create folders, make the folders private, only let certain people see them. But a site for photo sharing, a good one, is Flickr. Yes? Okay, so the use of audio and video embedding on our websites, that would push a higher ranking in the search engines? It could, because so many people use YouTube, and what if you have created a video about how to bake a pecan pie, and someone finds your video, that could give you traffic, that could give you rankings, same thing with SoundCloud and all of that, those sites are also becoming popular. Those sites are most likely much more popular than your site, than my site. And so people are searching, people are liking stuff here, viewing and hearing stuff here. And as you're building a presence on your site, and YouTube and SoundCloud, etc. That could help you get higher on the rankings. So SoundCloud, this is one of the bigger names on this. It's a lot for musicians that put out their albums and such, but there's plenty of podcasts out here. Um, for fun on the side, I do, a, I don't know if I mentioned that previously, one of my hobbies is to read and collect comic books. So I do a podcast about comic books. I've got it up here on SoundCloud. If you look up VM Campos, you'll see my podcast there. So this is obviously a big topic to get into. We don't have time in this class. Podcasts, recording your own shows, putting them out there. I get some traffic out of these. People, maybe they don't have time to go visit my website, but they subscribe to my podcast and it automatically goes to their phone and then they hear it when they want. And that's building more of a presence could get you more traffic. So the more that you do, SEO is a big topic than just keywords on my site. Are you also on Twitter? Are you active on blogging? Are you doing this and that? Take the SEO class where we go into more detail. But there are there... Uh, that's my main podcast there. There's these episodes, comic books. I do a weekly one. 17 views is better than zero views. Well, that one did well. 84 views right there. So, you know, people hear these. And um, this is just something for me on, for fun. You know, I, I, I tell people that I, I work here at this college. I work at Southwestern College. I'm also part of PMD Interactive. People ask me, when do you have the time? Well, the weekends are my time. Don't talk about me about anything else. It's my time on the weekend. But Monday through Thursday, Monday through Friday, I'm at two different schools or I'm at the company. And then for fun, I do stuff like this, read comics and talk about them. So I bring this up to you again because this could be a way for you to get more traffic. So create some sort of audio content. Here's another one. Um, when you are including, when you are putting some music to your web, not necessarily needs to start playing when you click it, but just when you open it, mm. how do you play those I do not recommend that. Mm -hmm. Don't put music automatically playing on your site. A lot of people don't like that because let's say they're at work and then they click to your website and send them the music and they say, shouldn't you be working? So don't put music to automatically play on a website. There is the ability, of course, to make it so that the person clicks to hear it their choice. But honestly, music playing on your website is not a modern thing to do anymore. Um, 
you can look it up elsewhere. And it's a little more complicated, actually. You do have to write some special code to get that to work. It's not that common anymore, so I don't recommend really you do it. Mm -hmm. I was about to say here that what you could also do, here's another way to get, uh, to help improve your SEO. Um, there's one big example of it. It's called slideshare.net. This is the YouTube of PowerPoint of presentations. This is one of the big things about SEO is content. What are you creating for people to find when they search? Okay, I'm not talented, en talented enough to make a video. I'm too shy to make a podcast. But I can open up my PowerPoint and create a 10-point presentation on something. A 10-slide presentation on something. And then I upload it to SlideShare, which is the biggest network about this. The lines between websites and social networks are blurring so much nowadays. Uh, SlideShare, it's, it's the YouTube of PowerPoint. People create presentations on a variety of things. This right here has got 95,000 views, 34,000 views. What's this over here? Top 10 tech jobs for 2016. A week ago, 28,000 views. Yes, of course, this is more effort and more work and such, and I'm busy running my website, and I'm about to make it an e-commerce website, and I'm going to be busy with that. But if no one knows your website exists, no one's going to visit it and buy your products. So what if, for Victor's Bakery, I create a simple five-slide PowerPoint? You know, I open up PowerPoint, I create five basic slides, put in my ingredients and preparation and my logo and my link at the end, and I upload it here. Baking recipes. Free, free full download cooking and baking recipe. Muffins, easy baking recipes. Little doubled recipes. How to bake. The art and science of baking. So people right there. People with various levels of skill are creating PowerPoints, uploading them here. And this is the biggest PowerPoint sharing network out there. So big that they got bought by LinkedIn. And if you haven't heard, uh, last week, Microsoft bought LinkedIn. So, big idea here. You may never have thought about that. PowerPoints? A network about PowerPoints? Yes. So big it got bought, and then that got bought. And so that's another thing to think about. The more of this that you do, the better, but we, we don't have to do them all. We don't have to engage in videos and audio and slides and all of that. The more of it that you do, that's the whole topics that we talk about in the SEO class and in the PowerPoint, uh, in, in the social media classes. It's just more to help you get found, to help you rise higher in the ranks, rankings. And from PowerPoint, it's, I mean, from SlideShare, you know, just randomly getting over here, uh, what's a good one, maybe, cooking tips and recipes. From a place like this also, somewhere here will be the embed code. Share right there, embed. So someone else's presentation, they want this. If they didn't want this, they turn it off. I want this. I want to put my slides up here so that someone finds it and shares it and makes me go viral and I make money off of that. But I can do the same thing from SlideShare. Copy that embed code, paste it into my text view, and then on my visual view. The presentation is embedded right into my PowerPoint, uh, right into my, right into my article here, with automatic branding of SlideShare and a link back to the originator. See right there. It came from Easy Chocolate Recipes too. I can do that. I want to do that. I want to put my own stuff there, and when someone shares my thing, it'll automatically have a link back to my website. So all of that is about um, multimedia. Text is great, uh, but if you want a little bit extra, you've got video, you've got audio, you've got slides.
So I'm creating this article, this this blog post. Do you see on the right side it says featured image, set featured image. What this is about is depending on your theme, and I'm going to say that so many times in this class and next month too, depending on your theme. I'm going to say that over and over because people will say, can I do this? Can I do that? How do you change this? How do you change that? I'm often going to say, depending on your theme, X, Y, Z. Because your theme has, has its built-in features and such. And so featured image, uh, depending on the theme, that'll be like a preview picture of your article. Other themes might display it in a different way, but here's an example, for example, swccis.com. This is over at Southwestern College, the computer department. There's a blog. And look at that, a picture that features what the article is about. This particular theme shows the featured image like this. Then they can click read more to read more the rest of the article. For us then, we have set featured image, and at the moment I don't know what this will look like. Um, I don't know how this particular theme will show the featured image, so it doesn't hurt for me to set the featured image. I'm gonna... I already have the penguin picture, but I'm going to upload another one just, just to try that out. So. We have the media library of what you've uploaded, and then you have upload. I'm going to upload a new picture. Just anything else, the koala. Don't worry about these other boxes, I'll just set featured. So somehow, my site will show that picture. Just like this site over here shows it like this. Here's another site. This particular site shows it like that, like a big horizontal picture on top of the article. So depending on the theme, they're both featured images. Depending on the theme, that's going to show up somehow. You'll see how it is a little bit later, and then you can decide if you like it or not. We'll talk about categories and tags a little later. That's for organization. They're valuable. We'll talk about them later. Format is also part of organization and also design. When we talk in detail about categories and tags, when someone searches in your website or someone searches in Google and they put keywords, this is categories and tags. And if you also organize your content, is this post focused on images? Is this fo post focused on video? Is it an audio post or just a standard one? This is also organization because when people are on your site and want to view all of your videos, they can easily load up all the videos. And depending on your theme, you have you may have more or less of these formats. Yes, you can set it on a post by post basis, each one however you want. But this is applying to this one post. So we would click video if you have multiple embedded videos. Yeah, if this post is like focused on video stuff, I would set it to video. That's the focus of this. If this post is just about regular text, perhaps leave it on standard. Some of these I myself also am not extremely familiar what they're for, like aside uh, status. But other ones make sense. This is primarily has audio in it, so I'll select audio. This is primarily about pictures, so it's a gallery. Multiple pictures. If you come back to the top right, you have the publish box. There's a few things to look at here. We haven't been doing it, but WordPress is pretty good about saving a draft automatically for you. We have save draft. Click save draft at the top right corner.
WordPress has the state that it's visible to people or not. When we click publish, anyone that has the link or anyone that can go to your website can find this article that we wrote. We can instead hide it from people um, with these various options. But let's say we're not ready for people to see it yet, so we can save it as a draft. What is it going to look like for people? Click Preview. It should open a new tab, and now it's going to show you what you've written. Oh, there's my featured image, nice and big up there. And then uh, the title of my article, and within the context of my design. And then there's the text that I wrote, and on the left side it show, shows who wrote it, and the time, and there's what I wrote, and my picture, and the video, and that's an active video that'll play right there. And then it's also got that embedded PowerPoint right there. So that opened a new most likely a new tab. I'm going to go back to the editing tab. That's what it looks like for people when they visit your site. This is my my dashboard, the, the back end. This is what it looks like for me as I'm editing it. It's not, it's not ready yet. We have the status of draft. Don't worry about that just yet. But, uh, this one's a good one. Visibility public. We have public, password, or private. So after we publish it, this will be public. Anyone can see it. People can search for it and find it. Private. That one is that um, if you share the link, people can see it, but they won't see it if they search for it. It's like when, when, if we had our name in the phone book, I mean our phone number. My phone number is in the phone book. It's public. Anyone can find my phone number. If I choose to have my phone number unlisted, that doesn't mean I have no phone number. That just means you don't know it. And as I give someone my phone number, they can further share it. So private is like that. No one will be able to find my article right here if they try to search for it. But if I send the link, and you should see probably that there's a link right here currently, that's the link to my article. If I share that link on an email or on social media, people can see it. They can't find it anywhere else. But if I have a, a blabbermouth email person and they forward it to 40 people, well, my private thing that I sent to one person got sent to 40 people. Just because this is private doesn't mean anyone else can see it. People, beginners of WordPress often confuse that. They say, I'm going to set it to private, no one can find it. No, it's still out there. And if they have the direct link to it, people can see it and share that link. The way for you to set it so that no one can see it is to make sure that your, your item is as a draft. Then it's removed from the internet. Even if they have the link to find your picture, your, your post, they cannot get to it. WordPress has deactivated it. Private is that it's out there. People can get to it if they've got the link. <coughs> password protected is kind of cool. It's not as powerful as you think, however. If I set pr password protected and add a password, anyone with the link to this post can get to it and then it'll say, please put your password. Anyone that comes to the site, this will be public. It'll be right there as a published article. But then when they click on it, it'll say, put the password. So this is not as powerful as some other kinds of features where you can create a whole robust password system. This is just a very basic thing. And so if someone shares, again, that blabbermouth shares your password, then everyone's got the password. And everyone can access it. Back on public, there was also stick this post. This is known as sticky, a sticky post. What this means is that the default behavior of WordPress, as we saw last time, is that, like on my comic blog here, the latest article pushes down 
the older article, which pushes down the older one, which well, there's an older one, and an older one, and an older one. That's the default behavior. If I want this particular post to always be visible first, even though it's a year old, I can activate stick this post to the front page. This one now will always be number one, and any new article that you add will be below that one. You can make more than one post sticky, but then you're kind of defeating the purpose. You put three sticky posts, and those three will always be visible, uh, taking up that space. And people say that he hasn't updated his site in a long time. Well, it's those three ones making people think that I don't have new articles. So I usually will do one sticky post at a time. I'm not going to change anything of this, actually, but those are what those are, public, password, and private. The next item here, publish immediately. If I were to click publish, and this were a real website, people could find this article right away. It's out there on the web to the world. We have instead here a way for us to schedule when this will appear. So let's say next week we're having a sale, next Monday the 27th. I can set here. June the 27th. 2016. This is in 24 hour time. Uh, so I want this to be published at 2 p.m., which would be 1400. 1400, 14 minutes. So I'm pu publishing this at 2 14 p.m. next week. You can use this also backwards. Yeah, this was published January 1st. Sure. And it will. It'll publish it as it'll put it out as if it was published on January first. The point of that is it's a little limited, but sometimes let's say I wanted to write an article about our ten year anniversary on January seventh, but we were busy that day. I didn't get a chance to sit down and write, so I sat down on June eighth and I wrote this article. And I came back here and I said, "Yeah, this was published on June seventh. There's nothing wrong with that, but if you'd like to backdate your posts, you can do that to have it." as if it was published at a specific date in the past. The value of also knowing about this to, to publish your posts in the future is that if you take the SEO class in there, I talk about the value of blogging on a regular basis. A very good, very basic thing to say is if you write 100 words per month, that is very good. That helps you with your rankings. Let's see. Quick blog tip. Quick blogging tip. Produce 100 words per month. Write a 100 word article every month. And you'll see plenty of articles out there that tell you, no, you have to write 300 words every week. Yes, that is a good answer too, but I don't have time for 300 words a week. I have time for 100 per month, and that's still 100 words. That's still 1,200 words you're putting out there to the world if you do this once a month. 1,200 words to help you get found. If you're doing it 300 uh, times per week, a little math here, 300 times 52 weeks, you're putting out 15,000 words out there to get found. That's still better than zero if you're not blogging. If you've just built your site and never updated it, those 100 words of your site stay there forever. You're not creating new stuff. Google is not finding it. And so 100 words per month, 100 word articles per month. I've written gibberish, but I've already got 36 words. I can do 100 words once a month. Well, maybe I can't. Maybe I'm very busy. That's why take one weekend, think of 1,000 words, break those into 10 articles, 100 words, 100 words, 100 words, you have 10 months of articles. If you're able to write those 1,000 words on that weekend and you break it up, you're going to schedule this. That one's going to be for July 21st. Then you're going to make another post. That one's going to be for August 21st. You're going to set these to be future posted for you, and then it'll automatically post itself once a month. Yes? Okay, so what if Let's say you, don't, you write zero words, but you still like, update images, update 
That's not as valuable, no. That, that stuff that already exists, if you just change what already exists, it's not as valuable as creating something new. And especially if I've got my home page, and I'm going to change that picture, that's not really that valuable. I'm going to change the name of my site, no, because that's the name of my site. I'm going to change the name of my article, no, that could break my link. So it's not really about these things that already exist that you're changing. It's new things that you keep adding to your site. So it's a lot of details there besides simply writing. Any questions so far? Yes? Um, so if you set one to be published in the future, um, do you have to change the visibility? Or you can see that like, it's just not there yet? It's going to be a draft until it gets published. You just you just leave it there, and it'll automatically set itself to uh, to active once it has auto published. Now, as I said previously, these screens can have a lot of options. All of these options here are not all the options. Go back to the top right and turn on screen options. And look at all the things that are not on. Let's turn them all on and take a quick look at them. Excerpt, send track backs, custom fields, discussion, slug, author. Layout, one column, two columns, self-explanatory. Enable full height editor. This is um, that you can expand your, your design like that. Do you want that or not? Anyway, I activated all the boxes, and it gives me a bunch of new boxes, such as excerpt. Excerpts are optional, handcrafted summaries for your content that can be used on your site, on your theme. Depending on your theme, you may have some preview text that appears first before your article. Depending on your theme, that could be the excerpt. I didn't write anything on my excerpt, so I don't know yet if either my theme will show nothing as a preview, or most commonly, It'll take the first few bits of text automatically as your preview excerpt text. I personally recommend that you always fill out that excerpt because that again is more content for the search engines to find. It could be the first paragraph that you wrote or it could be a variation of what your article is about. The search engines could find that when someone searches, and therefore to get you more visibility. Trackbacks. This one, don't worry about it really. This says to notify legacy blogs. If, uh, if you've got this modern version of WordPress, and because most websites, many websites out there are also WordPress, the two sites can communicate with each other. Um, so don't worry about this. This is like for older blogs. Custom fields is advanced. We won't really talk about it at the moment. This is more um, more ways to make your, your blog a little more powerful, but it requires meta tags and complicated, so don't worry about custom fields at the moment. What's useful here is allow comments. If you turn that off, no one can add a comment to this article. If you leave it on, people can comment on this article. So it's as easy as that. This is on an article per article basis. Track backs and pingbacks, just uh, don't worry about that. It's good that it's on. Slug, don't worry about that, but that's just the weird name for the address of your post. Um, it has a specific name. I mean, it has a specific meaning why it's named that way, but at the very top, under the name of your article, you should say permalink. That's the link to your article. And then slug is just another way to, to create your address, but it often fills itself in automatically. So don't worry about the slug either. And then under author, there's only one person only myself, I created my site, only I work on it, only I edit it. But if I had other people working on it, do I want their name to be attached to, to it or not? Like I'm showing here. Okay. 
like I'm showing here. This name of admin is what appears on the on the post. I can change that if I have other people also writing for me. If I have other people contributing to my blog, do I want their name to appear there or not? So finally, at this point, let's say publish. I publish this. I want to see what it looks like. So what do we need to do? I'm in the dashboard. How do I go to the front end? I'm going to click the name of your website name. So on the home page of my website, how to bake a pie. There's the um, featured image. There's that info, everything else. There's the previous article. It automatically had a Hello World article. And it appeared below my previous one. My, my newest one. My newest article pushed down the older article. That's the default. And the default also I don't like. The whole article is there, everything here. You have to scroll past it to see the second article. The default is the completeness of the article shows up unless you do otherwise. Again, in the example of my blog, I only have a picture and a little bit of text to entice people, and if they're interested in that, continue reading. They look at this one, they're interested in that one, continue reading. That's not the default of WordPress. We're seeing it right here. The whole thing is visible. Let's show you how this is done, then we'll take a break. How do I do this? How do I do continue reading? I want only a little bit to be shown, and then the rest when they click. Let's go back to the dashboard. So wherever you're at right here, at the top left corner, click on the name of your site. Back to the dashboard. We'll hover over posts, and this time select all posts. All of the posts that I've already written are going to be listed here. So posts, all posts, show all posts. It shows the hello world post that we've already that's already created there on by default. And then um, and then the one we just made right there. Um, WordPress sometimes hides things. So if you hover your mouse over these, notice you get the options. Edit. So if you if you put your mouse over it, you'll, you'll see it. We have edit, quick edit, trash, and view. Um, quick edit isn't the answer because this will just let you quickly edit some basic things about the article. How to turn it on password protected quickly. How to make it private, change the date. Basic things. Quick edit. Status published or status draft. So if that's what I'm saying. Private, people can still get to it. Draft is the method that you hide it from the internet. That's quick edit. I want to go back to actually edit the full article, so that sh they should call it full edit. Quick edit, full edit. But edit will be the full edit, so click on edit. Click on edit. And the way it works to create to do to create that read more is you manually tell WordPress where would you like that. So you manually can write whatever preview text you want. So let's say some preview text will be visible here first. I can also add pictures, bullet points, whatever, but usually I'm gonna add a little text here. Uh, here's our classic recipe for a pecan pie. Just like Emma used to make. I then want a button that says read more. The button is right here. It looks like a little um, 
like a, I look at it like the, 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 the lane divider in the middle of the road. But it's supposed to be a page and then another page. It's the read more. Insert read more tag. So wherever you want that read more to appear, you know, you click where you want it. Let's say I, I want to put it right here. In between what I wrote, preview, and the rest of the article. I press enter to give me a little spot right there. And then I'll click the insert read more. Click on that and it'll show you, show you that. You only want one of these, of course. If you try to add it anywhere else, you never actually tried what happens. It inserts it. It's not going to work because there's only one place for you to read more. That's funny that it lets you do it more than once. It shouldn't work. But I'm going to write a little snippet. Press enter, add read more, and then keep typing the rest. Update it. See now, notice it says update. You've already published it. Now it's a change. So you need to update what you've changed, what you what you've written. So update it. Visit site. So after we do the read more, um, it pops out the line. Mm -hmm. Do we write more underneath? So they it can pop out when they click read more or no? Yes, that's what we did before. We already wrote some things, okay. and then and then we added the read more now. But if this was a brand new empty article, yes, you would write something, add read more, and then keep writing the rest for them. So for when them you click read more, that, that FDS, uh, whatever you wrote underneath, is going to show. No, nope. if I have a brand new empty article like that, I'm going to write something, <coughs> I'm going to press enter, read more, then I'm press enter, and then I'm going to write some more. So I'm going to update it, visit site, and I'm on the home page. There's the pecan article again. I scroll down. Here's the little text. Continue reading. And then the next one. So if they'd like to see the whole thing, they can. Instead of all 100 words that they don't care about and just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, there's a snippet of what they might enjoy. Here, here's another site. The site with a blog. Investing tips for, for millennials. I'm not a millennial. I don't care. Skip it. Building an app with HTML. I don't care. Skip it. CSS Dropship. Oh, I care about that one. Continue reading. If I didn't have that, then the whole everything about the article will be there, and a person will read and read and skip and scroll, and then they'll get annoyed with so much to look at. And um, it's pretty easy to do, isn't it? You're, you're editing your article, and you simply insert that read more wherever you want it, and it'll break it for you. Depending on your theme, this particular theme says continue reading in a nice little button. This one says continue reading with a with a symbol, the arrow. Ours just says continue reading. The functionality is that it, then if you click on it, it jumps you to the rest of the article. So let's take our, our, our second break. Uh, then what we'll do after the break is uh, we'll talk about pages. WordPress is made out of posts and pages, and it's often confusing for a beginner. But we'll talk exactly what they're about and why we would need the two. So it's 8.36. We'll be back at 8.46, and then we'll go on. <laughs>